Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. This week, we have our players duking it out with some of the more popular commander options out there. First up is Ethan, playing Chevy Supreme's Commander of Choice from our 1k subscriber giveaway, Sexara the Exemplary. This deck is focused around X spells, hoping to make a ton of mana and then cast huge spells to take over the game. His hand has a Forest, Command Tower, Greater Good, Rampant Growth, Wildest Dreams, Primal Might, and an Icy Blast. Next we have Chandler, piloting Arcades the Strategist. Now Chandler and Arcades have something in common. They both like big butts and cannot lie about it. This deck is wall tribal, using their high toughness as their power to smash opponents faces in. His hand has a breeding pool, a bark channel pathway, rogues passage, overgrown battlement, wall of lost thoughts, jungle barrier, and an assault formation. Third, Cameron keeps up his recent trend of playing Boros with his Akiri Arden partner deck. Cameron's game plan is to play Akiri, load her up with a ton of equipment, and beat face. His opening hand has a Mountain, Temple of Triumph, Inventor's Fair, Talisman of Conviction, Worn Power Stone, Chaos Warp, and a Pure Steel Paladin. Last up is Shelby on Niv Mizzet Perun. This deck has two goals, cast spells to draw cards, and draw cards to find spells. He keeps a hand with two islands, Fiery Islet, Goblin Electromancer, Jushi Apprentice, Archmage Ascension, and a Rhystic Study. From the look of these hands, it's going to be a really exciting game. So let's hop right into it. It looks like Ethan wins the die roll. He plays a forest and passes. Chandler has a similar turn. He plays a tap breeding pool and passes. Cameron plays a temple of triumph and scries one to the bottom. The turn is then shipped to Shelby, who plays a fiery islet and passes to Ethan, who plays a command tower and then casts a rampant growth. While Ethan finds an island to the battlefield, Chandler plays a rogue's passage and then casts Farseek. He finds a tapped Temple Garden and then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Battlefield Forge, taps for two, and casts Talisman of Conviction. The turn is then passed to Shelby, who plays an Island, and then casts Jushi Apprentice, taking one. He then passes to Ethan, who plays a Swamp as his land for turn. He then decides to cast Zaxara, and then pass to Chandler. Chandler plays a Tide Channel Pathway as land for turn, and then decides to cast his own commander, Arcades. He then passes to Cameron, who plays a Mountain, taps for four, and casts Keeper of the Accord. After this, he passes to Shelby. Shelby plays an island, taps for three, and casts Archmage's Ascension. He then passes to Ethan, who plays another Swamp as land for turn. He then taps for six mana to cast a Green Sun Zenith X is five to find a Seedborn Muse to the battlefield. He also makes a 5-5 five five Hydra. He then passes and Cameron gets a 1-1 one one and a Plains on Ethan's end step. On his turn, Chandler taps for four and casts a Jungle Barrier. He gets to draw two cards off of its ETB, then swings three Vigilance at Ethan and then plays a Command Tower as land for turn before passing to Cameron. And on his end step, Cameron gets a Plains to the battlefield tapped. He then plays a Dark Steel Citadel as land for turn. He then taps for two to cast a Pure Steel Paladin. After this, he casts a Swift Foot Boots, equips it to the Paladin for free after drawing a card, then taps for three to cast a Worn Power Stone. He then swings Keeper at Shelby and then passes to Shelby. And then on his turn, Shelby plays another Island and then casts Rhystic Study. Shelby then passes to Ethan, and on his end step, Ethan taps and casts Icy Blast X is equal to 5, and he does pay the 1 to Rhystic Study. He taps down Jungle Barrier, Arcades, Keeper of the Accord, Cameron's 1-1, one, one, and Jushu Apprentice, and Ethan will make another 5-5. Five, five. And then finally on his turn, Ethan moves straight to combat, swinging 5 at Chandler, 5 at Cameron, and 2 at Shelby. They all take it. Then he taps for 3 to cast an Elementalist Palette, and pays the 1. After this, Ethan attempts to cast a Greater Good, not paying the one this time, but Shelby slams down a stubborn denial. Ethan then just passes to Chandler after this. On his turn, Chandler casts a Wall of Lost Thoughts, drawing a card upon ETB and milling Ethan for four. Chandler also does not pay for Rhystic Study. After this, he plays a Misty Rainforest, cracks it to find an untapped Hollowed Fountain, losing a total of three life. He then taps for four to cast a Dusk, destroying all creatures with power three or greater. Shelby also gets to draw another card off of it. Chandler then passes to Cameron after that, and on his turn, Cameron plays an Adventure's Fair. After thinking for a little bit, he decides to crack it, and he finds a Sun Forger to his hand. He then casts it and free equips it to his Pure Steel Paladin. After this, he moves to combat and swings for 6 at Shelby. He then passes to said Shelby, who plays another island as land for turn. He then casts a Propaganda. 
And after that, he casts a Gobo, taking one to his Fire Islet. After this, he passes to Ethan, and on his turn, Ethan shocks in a Breeding Pool, and then casts a Wildest Dreams, X is equal to 3. And seeing as Ethan has tapped a lot of his mana, Cameron decides to unattach Sunforger to find Tybalt's Trickery to counter the spell. Cameron rolls, and Ethan has to mail 3 cards from the top of his library. He reveals Anissa, Steward of Elements, and unfortunately, because he's using an alternate casting cost, he can't pay into the X. And so, if he were to cast Nyssa, she would die to state-based effects. But he decides to cast her anyway, because then she'll be going to the graveyard and not staying in exile. It also gets him two counters in his Artificer's Palette, which has four total counters now. And then Shelby remembers that he got three Aristic Study triggers from Cameron and Ethan. Cameron can't pay, and Ethan pays for one. Ethan then decides to just pass to Chandler. Chandler casts a Selesnya Signet on his turn, paying the one. He then casts a Kodama's Reach, not paying the one and finds a forest to his hand and a plains to the battlefield tapped. He then plays the forest as land for turn, tasks for two, and casts overgrown battlements, once again not paying the one. Chandler then passes the turn to Cameron. And on his turn, Cameron plays Urza's Saga as land for turn, triggering its first ability. He then tasks for two to cast Akiri, Line Slinger. After that, he immediately equips Sunforger in the boots, then casts a Soul Ring. He then unequips the Sunforger, taking one to his Talisman. Shelby reminds him of two Ristic Study triggers, which he taps his Worn Power Stone for. He then ultimately decides to find Wear Terror, only being able to cast the Wear side because he cast it with Sunforger, and he decides to destroy the Ristic Study. And he does pay the one. After this, he moves to combat and swings a 10 power Vigilance First Strike at Kiri at Ethan, who obviously chump blocks it with his 3 3 Hydra. The turn is then passed to Shelby. He plays yet another island, and Ethan asks, how are you going to get the red to cast niv -Mizzet? Shelby answers with a Pyretic Ritual. He gets three red off of it, then taps for three blue, and casts niv -Mizzet. The turn is then passed to Ethan, who starts his turn off with a forest. He then taps out completely to cast a Primal Might, X is equal to 12, making a 12-12 Hydra, and having Zaxara fight Cameron's Pure Steel Paladin. No more free equips, sir. Shelby also gets to draw a card off of this, and deals 1 damage to one of Cameron's 1-1 one -one soldiers. And after a pretty eventful turn, Ethan passes to Chandler, and they both untap. Chandler plays an island as land for turn, then taps for 6 to recast Arcades. After this, he taps his Overgrown Battlements for 3 to cast a Carven Karyatid. He draws 2 cards off of this. He then casts a Vizier of Remedies, and everybody's a little worried because they know he's playing the Devoted Druid combo in here. But Chandler just passes, and on his end step, Cameron taps for three, taking one to his battlefield forge, to Chaos Warp Shelby's niv -Mizzet. The niv -Mizzet draws him a card, and he pings Cameron for one. Shelby then responds by brainstorming, drawing yet another card, and then three more, hitting Cameron's face three more times, and then one to his 1-1 one -one soldier. Shelby returns niv -Mizzet to the command zone, and reveals an island, which he gets to put to the battlefield. After this, it is now Cameron's turn. He starts his turn off with a Rogue's Passage, and then activates Urza's Saga to make a 0-0. After this, he unequips Sunforger to go find an Akroma's Will, and because he's got a commander, he gets to choose both modes of it. And after equipping Sunforger again, Akiri is now an 11 power, Flying Vigilance, Double Strike, Lifelink, Indestructible Commander. Pretty much Cameron gets to choose who he kills this turn. And after a couple minutes of thinking about it, he ultimately decides to swing at Shelby because he's got 10 cards in his hand. And Cameron does pay 2 to Propaganda. And so Shelby shows a few cards that he had in hand, which includes a Jeweled Lotus, so he could have gotten to miss it back out next turn. And then he dies, and Cameron gains 22 life. Cameron then passes the turn to Ethan, who immediately taps out to cast a Finale of Devastation, X is equal to 11. Ethan's commander triggers, and he makes an 11-11 Hydra. Cameron, knowing this is probably pretty bad for him, unequips Sunforger and Laps of Certainties it. And since Ethan tapped out, he then passes to Chandler. Chandler plays a Reliquary Tower as land for turn, and Chandler ultimately decides to pass to Cameron, but not before swinging with Arcades for three. And after Cameron's draw step, Urza Saga triggers, Cameron sacrifices it to go find a Colossus Hammer. Cameron then goes to equip Sunforger, but in response, Chandler decides it's time to overload his Cyclonic Rift. Ethan and Cameron both pick up their boards, and honestly, Ethan couldn't be happier. Cameron then recasts Soul Ring, then shocks in a Sacred Foundry. He then recasts Akiri, and then finally casts Arden. He then recasts Swiftfoot Boots and Colossus Hammer, and then attempts to move to combat to get them attached to Akiri. Chandler responds though by path to exiling Arden before they move to combat. 
Cameron finds a tapped mountain and then passes to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by recasting his pallet, and then casts a Green Sun Zenith X is equal to 3 to find a Reclamation Sage. After asking Chandler his opinion, Ethan ultimately decides to blow up the Swiftfoot boots. He then passes to Chandler. Chandler starts his turn off by playing and cracking a Prismatic Vista for a forest. He then plays Assault Formation. Chandler then moves straight to combat and full swings at Cameron. Cameron ultimately decides to block the Vizier because there is a misplay here. Because this is Chandler's first time ever playing his Arcades deck, he thought Assault Formation just made Defender creatures deal damage with their butts when it's actually all creatures. Regardless, Chandler pumps all his creatures for plus zero plus one three times. Moving to damage, Cameron takes 31 damage from the walls, three from Arcades, and none from the Vizier. He should have taken eight from Arcades though. And with the Vizier now having four toughness, it should have killed Akiri. But regardless, Chandler still put Cameron down to a much more manageable life total. Chandler then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Rustvale Bridge as his lane for turn, then plays his good friend, Sunforger. After that, he casts Arden, then moves to combat, equipping all his equipment to Akiri. He swings at Chandler, but before blocks, decides to unattach Sunforger. He finds a Dispatch and dispatches Arcades. And since he didn't get the block, Chandler is smacked by a 15 power Akiri. The turn is then passed to Ethan. Ethan plays a tapped Rhymewood Falls as land for turn, then recasts his commander, Zaxara. After this, he casts a Finale of Devastation, X is equal to 3, getting a 3-3 Hydra. And unable to find anything useful, Ethan finds a Hungering Hydra and it dies to state-based effects. He then passes to Chandler. Chandler starts by paying 4 mana to make 4 of his walls able to attack. He then pays 6 mana to boost them all by 2. Cameron unfortunately dies no matter how he blocks, but he decides to take out the Vizier with him, so he blocks it with Akiri, and then dies. Chandler then passes the turn to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by recasting his Seedborn Muse. He then moves straight to combat, swinging for 5, and then after Chandler takes that 5 damage, he casts an Animus Awakening, X is equal to 8, making an 8-8 Hydra. And off the top 8 cards of his library, he reveals 5 lands, and because he has Delirium, they come in untapped. Ethan then passes to Chandler, and they both untap. Chandler starts his turn off by recasting Arcades. He then taps a Plains and Overgrown Battlements to cast a Smothering Tithe. And after this, he casts a Wall of Denial, drawing a card. Then plays a Sun Petal Grove as land for turn. He then just passes to Ethan, who on his end step fetches twice to find his Triome and an Icy Tunnel. Ethan starts off by playing for Smothering Tithe. Ethan then taps completely out after peeling a nice card off the top, and it turns out to be a Primordial Hydra. He casts it for X is equal to 15. So he gets a 15-15 Primordial Hydra, and then a 15-15 Hydra off Zaxara. Ethan then moves to combat and swings everything he can at Chandler, which is Zaxara, his 3-3, his 8-8, and his 2-1. Chandler lets in Zaxara and the 8-8, but blocks the rest, going down to a dangerously low life total. He's basically praying for a board wipe off the top. Ethan passes, and Chandler untaps, and draws. Unfortunately, it is just another land, and in the face of a 30-30 trample next turn, plus the rest of his board, Chandler just concedes. Well guys, what'd you think? It had a lot of twisted turns, and ultimately, Ethan came out on top. He had some really good draws there at the end, which gave him that giant primordial hydra. Well, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, follow us on social media. Links will be in the description, along with the deck lists, if you want to check those out, too. And if you have any cool thoughts, or you notice something that we missed during this game, please leave a comment down below. As always, you guys, have a smooth day.